Are you looking at them? Is that the puppy? planning to make some hummus this week and so I thought I would show you how I sprout my chickpeas before I do that. All beans should be at least soaked but ideally sprouted before cooking and eating them. So uh, I have a big family. They like hummus and we will eat a fairly large amount in a week. So I'm going to actually measure out four cups of chickpeas. All I'm going to do now is cover them a couple inches with filtered water. They're going to expand quite a bit. If you've never soaked beans before, uh, they will probably almost triple their size. So you want to make sure that there is a lot of extra water. Don't just barely cover them and also make sure that your pot is big enough to handle them growing three times in size. First thing I'm going to do is give my chickpeas a quick rinse and we'll drain that water and then we'll fill it up. Now step one is done. That's all we're doing. We're just covering them in water and we're gonna let them sit for eight to 12 hours. Also, if you think that you've covered your chickpeas with enough water and they swell up bigger than you thought and they are coming out the top of the water, it's okay, that's not a problem. Even if it's been a couple hours like that, they're still, the reason that they've swollen up is because they've absorbed water. So you just add some more whenever you notice, pour them into a bigger container because they're exploding out of that container. I've experienced all that, it's okay. Just pour them into another bigger container, add some more water, finish out that eight to 12 hours, maybe up it to the 12 if you were around the eight hour mark before you noticed it. Give it a little bit more time. It's not a big deal. So these are just gonna sit on my counter now. All right, so it's the next morning after I started soaking my chickpeas. And all I'm gonna do now is just drain them into this colander, give them a rinse and let them sit again. much of that water as you can and then my colander has feet on it which is perfect so it won't sit in any water that's draining I'm just gonna stick it right back in that pot I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna rinse it now morning and evening we're gonna watch for any of these to sprout probably the ones on top are gonna be the least likely to sprout so every time that you rinse them you're gonna want to move them around a little bit and check the ones underneath they're gonna sprout right out of that little bottom spot so you're gonna see a little thing growing out of there so once you see one or a couple of them that have done that then you're good to go because even the ones you can't see have likely been activated at that time into a living food anyways. So you don't need them all to have sprouts. You just need to see that they are sprouting. So we're just gonna set it aside in warm temperature, warm climates. That's probably gonna take uh, a day and a half. Do these as quick as a day and a half. In colder climates, when we're in Canada, this is probably a three day process. All right, so I just checked my chickpeas. I was about to give them another rinse and as I sorted through them with my hands, I could see that a few of them have sprouted. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're gonna look like. Just on the bottom, the pointy spot, they're just gonna grow a little sprout. So as soon as that happens, uh, you just give them a rinse and start cooking. In my case, it's already supper time and I don't really wanna cook them tonight. So I'm gonna actually just rinse them and put them in the fridge to stop the sprouting process so that I don't have really long sprouts in the morning when I am ready to cook them. The chickpeas have been in the fridge overnight and although it did slow down their sprouting process, it did not completely stop it. So a lot more of them are sprouted now. So the sprouts are a little bit longer on some of them. It's definitely time to cook them. We're gonna give them one more rinse, fill it up with water and cook them and then we will make hummus. Mm -hmm. 
So if you've never cooked beans from dry before, they're not too complicated. I'm gonna add a little bit of baking soda because it helps them to soften up more evenly. Otherwise you end up sometimes with some hard ones and some really mushy ones. So the baking soda just helps to soften them all about the same rate. And then you're just gonna bring them to a rapid boil. I'm gonna put a lid on them, rapid boil them, and then you turn them down to simmer until they're completely cooked. All right, so I got my chickpeas cooked yesterday. I didn't get to making the hummus yesterday, so we're gonna do that today instead. I just refrigerated them overnight. You can use raw garlic in your hummus if you want to, but my family prefers it roasted. So I'm gonna go ahead and roast it. These are pre-peeled organic garlic cloves, which are just a lot easier. They save a lot of time. So if you've never roasted garlic before, it's really extremely easy. So an oven-proof dish, and I am going to cover it in avocado oil or coconut oil. I'm just gonna stir it around, make sure the oil is coating all the garlic, and then cover your bowl in tin foil. And I'm gonna pop it in the oven, I'm gonna roast it at 325 for probably about 15, 20 minutes. While we're waiting for the garlic to roast, we're gonna get everything else prepped and ready to go. So all we have to do is throw the garlic in there. I'm gonna use my Vitamix to make my hummus. If you don't have a high powered blender, next best option would be a food processor. Okay, so making hummus, the ingredients are fairly basic. You need some chickpeas, salt, I use Himalayan pink salt, some lemon juice, you can use freshly squeezed if you want. I'm just going to use real lemon from the store. Some ice water, tahini, and then your garlic, of course. So, for starters, I'm gonna put my chickpeas in. a bit in there maybe about a quarter cup you might want to start with a little bit less if you're not sure about that and again because I'm making a large batch if this ends up being a little bit too salty or too lemony I'll just cut back on the next batch as I do that so ice water I put in some tahini probably do around a quarter cup for a batch this size. I'm gonna go ahead and blend this up and then I will add the garlic to it after. I'm gonna add a little bit more lemon juice and then I'm gonna wait for that garlic to be done and Throw that in there and give it a little bit more of a blend. <laughs> Alright, so while my garlic is roasting and I'm waiting, I am going to make some homemade laundry detergent. This is a very inexpensive recipe to make. I see a lot online that call for grating bars of soap. I did that for a while, but that is a process I didn't feel like doing anymore. So I found another recipe that uses liquid cast out soap. There is no grating involved. Any liquid cast out soap that doesn't have any other additives will work. And so this is how I do that. Let me start with two cups of water. I'm gonna put four tablespoons, or approximately four tablespoons, of all three of these in there. Four, so that's four acts. This is washing soda. tablespoons of soap. Okay. And stir that up. So one thing with borax and washing soda and boiling water is you don't want to breathe in the fumes. They're slightly toxic. So just take a step back. This is going to make my two laundry containers that I use right now. So this one's just under two liters and this one's just over. I'm going to give out four quarts of laundry detergent right now, just a little bit more than that. So I'm going to take and pour half of this into one jug. And I'm going to put two more cups of boiling water in. Give those a 
swish in there. And then you're gonna top it up with cold water. And there you have it. And it's ready to use right away. You don't have to wait overnight for it to gel like you do in your grating bars of soap. So it's really easy, very cost effective, great for a large family, and you can use it right away. Hey Levi. Hey buddy. You guys are on the tricycle? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, you okay? Leva, how you doing? All right, so my garlic is roasted. And I'm going to put about half of it in here. Oh, I'm burning my hands right there. And we're just going to re-blend that up. All right, so there's my hummus. Uh, and then the rest is up to you. It's all about preference. If you want it a little bit thinner, you can add more of the ice water. If you want it creamier, you add more tahini. If you want it to have more tang, more salt, add some of that. So it's all about preference and how your family likes it. Hot, 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 h